Star Wars has some of the most amazing and iconic moments in all of television history, but it has also broken our hearts on a few occasions. Let's count down the top six moments that Star Wars has brought us to tears. Number six, Obi-Wan fell in love with Duchess Satine Kreese of Mandalore back when he was a Padawan. He was tasked with protecting Satine from assassins. They were both on the run like refugees, similar to Padme and Anakin. Later, during the Clone Wars, Obi-Wan tells Satine that all she had to do back then was to say the words, and Obi-Wan would have left the Jedi Order. Both fought to give in to their desires and continued on with their life dedicated to service. Near the end of the Clone Wars, she is thrown in prison by Darth Maul and Pre Vizsla. Obi-Wan rescues her only to have Maul capture her again. Because of Maul's desire for vengeance, he kills Satine right in front of Obi-Wan as he watches. With her final breath, she tells Obi-Wan that she loves him. Number 5. Kanan Jars and the Ghost Crew, including his love, Hera Syndulla, Padawan Ezra Bridger, Zeb, Chopper, and Sabine Wren were in a battle to liberate the planet of Lothal. Hera had been captured and was held at the Imperial Complex. The rest of the Ghost Crew were on a mission to rescue Hera. She was being tortured by Governor Arinda Price when, during a break in the interrogation, Kanan broke into the room and rescued Hera. As the Imperials chased the ghost crew during the escape, their glider was damaged and they had to land on the Lothal City Fuel Depot. Sabine and Ezra show up to rescue the two lovebirds when Governor Price ordered the AT-AT walkers to fire on the Fuel Depot. This triggers a massive explosion that would kill the entire crew. Kanan, however, uses the force to hold back the explosion just long enough to let the rest of the crew escape, but unable to save himself. Kanan was consumed by the flames after the ghost crew escaped, becoming one with the force. Hera mourned his death, attaching a piece of his holocron to her Kalakori. And at the end of Rebels, we see her and Kanan's son, Jason Syndulla. Alright, we are getting into deep water here. Number 4. During the Clone Wars, there's a terrorist attack at the Jedi Temple on Coruscant and a bomb goes off, killing a bunch of people. During the investigation, Ahsoka is framed for the crime. She goes on the run in order to find evidence that she's being framed and to find the real terrorist. The Jedi Council really do nothing in the way of supporting Ahsoka. As Mace Windu said, says that protecting Ahsoka could be seen as an act of opposing the Senate. The only one who believes her and tries to help her is of course her master Anakin Skywalker. They send Master Plo Koon, the Jedi who originally discovered Ahsoka as a force sensitive youngling and Anakin to bring Ahsoka in. They eventually find her and the council casts her out of the Jedi Order and in a symbolic gesture removes her Padawan braid. She is taken into custody by the Senate and a trial commences. During the trial, a faithful Anakin refuses to believe Ahsoka Ahsoka is guilty and tracks down the real terrorist. He discovers it's Barriss Afi, the Padawan of Jedi Master Luminara Unduli. She admits her guilt and Ahsoka is finally released. Yoda approaches Ahsoka on behalf of the Jedi Council with an apology and to accept Ahsoka back into the Jedi Order. They rationalize this entire ordeal as being Ahsoka's great trial and her overcoming this is her path to becoming a true Jedi. And Anakin reveals that he had kept her Padawan braid and holds it out to Ahsoka as a gesture to show that he never lost faith in her. She then shocks everyone by refusing and leaves the temple. Anakin runs after her and stops her on the front steps. She tells Anakin that she she can't go back. The only people she trusted don't trust her and that she feels betrayed and abandoned by everyone in the Jedi, of course except Anakin. Anakin tells her that he understands the way she feels and that he's actually had similar feelings of leaving the Jedi Order. In the final scene, Anakin watches his close friend and Padawan walk down the temple steps and away from him and the Jedi Order. Number 3. The season 2 finale of The Mandalorian, Din Djarin, Bo-Katan, Cara Dune, and Fennec Shen are on a mission to rescue Grogu who has been captured by Moff Gideon. Din Djarin has spent his entire time with Grogu protecting him and trying to get him back to his own kind. With the help of Boba Fett, they crash land aboard Moff Gideon's ship pretending to be shot at by Boba's Slave One. Once aboard, they blast their way onto the command deck to find Gideon missing. Mando splits off from the main group to find where Grogu is being held. He encounters a dark trooper that he barely defeats and then finds Moff Gideon in a holding cell next to Grogu holding the Darksaber. After a quick fight, Mando frees Grogu and takes him and Moff Gideon to the command deck. Right then, an entire squadron of Dark Troopers are about to break through the blast doors. There would have been no escape with these Dark Troopers, but on the surveillance monitor, an X-Wing arrives. Next, we see a gloved hand 
and a hooded figure ignite a green lightsaber. So right here, my eyes started to water. Luke Skywalker removes his hood. Now at this point, I'm a complete mess. The floodgates open and I was ugly crying, my nose was running and I couldn't stop. Of course, the heartbreaking part of this is when Mando removes his helmet and is saying goodbye to Grogu. But if I'm completely honest, I'd say 90% of my tears were just from seeing Jedi Master Luke Skywalker. Crying is crying, so this solidifies its spot at number three. Now, when I was writing this list out, number one and number two, I swapped a few times before the final draft. This was a tough one and I could put either one of these at number one. All right, coming in at number two, the Clone Wars season finale. This shows Ahsoka's point of view. She goes to Anakin and the Jedi Council for help in defending Mandalore from a siege by Death Watch and Darth Maul. When she meets with Anakin, he has a few surprises for her. One, he takes her into the hall where the 501st are waiting for her, their helmets painted with her facial markings as tribute to their former general. Now this scene here started the waterworks for me. Anakin's second surprise is giving her lightsabers back. This gesture to me shows the bond they have and how much he cares for his former Padawan, as well as how much the clone troopers love and respect her and what she's gone through with them. However, after the siege of Mandalore is over, Ahsoka and part of the 501st squadron that went with her on the mission were heading back to Mandalore when Order 66 was given by Darth Sidious. The clones, painted with Ahsoka's markings, turn on her. She was able to escape, barely, and rescues Rex by having his chip removed. The chase ended with all of those clones on the ship when it crashed down onto the planet's surface. Ahsoka and Rex faked their death in order to escape, and the final scene shows the painted helmets of the 501st mounted as a memorial. Vader arrives and finds his former Padawan's lightsabers he has given her the last time he saw her. Are you crying? What's that? Are you crying? Am I crying? No, I'm not crying. You're crying. All right, coming in at number one, the Battle of Mustafar. This I put at number one because it's the heaviest moment in the entire saga, the biggest consequences, and with two main characters of the prequels with a huge impact on the entire original trilogy as well. This is the final step in Anakin's transformation to Darth Vader. Obi-Wan sees a hologram of Anakin killing younglings and then sees Palpatine name him Darth Vader. Obi-Wan travels to Mustafar, hidden on Padme's ship. As Obi-Wan steps out to confront Anakin, he becomes enraged at Padme, thinking she has turned against him. He chokes her with the force until Obi-Wan comes down to fight him. They have a historic lightsaber battle. Anakin's aggressive Form 5 lightsaber technique against Obi-Wan's Form 3. Obi-Wan gets the upper hand by positioning himself on the high ground and Anakin's arrogance causes him to try it anyway. Obi-Wan cuts him down and Anakin's body catches fire as he screams his hatred for his old master. Devastated by his brother's fall into darkness and the guilt and remorse he feels adds to the real tragedy of Anakin. Padme then dies giving birth to the twins Luke and Leia and in true George Lucas fashion, this ends with a new hope. Oof, well, all right, we made it through it. Now, what if Anakin could have been saved from turning to the dark side? Click this video here to see my theory on how Yoda could have helped him during the events of Revenge of the Sith, and may the Force be with you.